But today I wanted to start off, I want to go through this uh, second assignment that I gave you on eDirect. And um, I'm going to give you guys the solution, show you guys the solution for that. And then um, I'm also going to talk about the next assignment that you guys have coming up. All right, so I have just accessed, as you can see, I've accessed my, um, my Linux image, the SDSU image, the computational genomics image um, that I created for you guys. And as you guys know, I keep updating it and making sure that everything works. There's a newer version that's available. Um, and so f before you start the next assignment, make sure you update to the newest version. Um, but I wanted to walk through the, um, the previous assignment just so you guys, so I can demonstrate one solution. I'm going to get the, um, the list of genera that was the, the sort of focus of the first part of the assignment, and I'm going to save it in a file called genera.txt. And here I'm using a program called curl, which is a way of downloading stuff, downloading web pages directly um, to files. There's another program you can use, it's called wget, or of course you could just copy and paste, that's totally fine too. Um, but I'm just going to use curl, here's the URL, and you can see that it downloaded the file that we were supposed to download. Before I go through all of the file, I just want to see if I can get a solution that works for one of the genomes. Right, I'm just going to choose one at random. I, I don't want to. This is, this is computational thinking. Right, we've got a big problem, which is, how do we understand all of the genomes for all of these organisms? But I don't want to solve that all at once. What I want to do is, I want to break that down into a smaller problem that I can solve. And the small problem that I can solve is, how can I understand the genomes that are here for one organism? So let's just take one at, at random. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to choose this one because that's where my cursor is. And I'm going to create a variable called genome, which has that name. And now I can just print that same variable out. OK, there it is. Yeah. And then in the, um, the eFetch website that I put up for you guys, this website right here, I zoom in a little bit. Down a little bit further, there's an example on how to do the e-search, in fact, this example right here, for this particular bacterium. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start and I'm going to just copy the first part of this query. And, but my genome is now in a variable called genome instead of being this organism name that's shown on the screen. And then I'm going to copy the rest of the squ this query. And of course, this wraps onto two lines. So let me just grab the extract part that I talked about when we talked about using eDirect and, and eFetch. And so here's our extract. So this particular genome, that, this particular organism, there are three genomes associated with this particular organism, right? OK, cool. So I figured out how to do it for one genome. What I want to get is I want to get a number. So there's a command in bash that you can just pipe to, which is called wc. And wc takes an option minus l, which is just tell me how many lines there are. So it gives me a number, the number three, yeah? So in fact, I could take this and save it as a variable. Let's call my variable count. And then I can echo count three. And in fact, what I can do is I could echo genome and count. So this tells me that this Fisherella has three genomes. Yeah? 
Everybody cool so far? OK. So now what we've got to do is go through our file and do it for every genome in the file. So if we just iterate through the file, and print out the genomes. You can see that in Bash, by default, what it's actually doing is it's not splitting on the end of the line, right? So we want it to be, we want the first one to be Acidaminococcus intestini. But in fact, if I just iterate through and print them out, it's done the Acidaminococcus on one line and then the intestini on the next line. And that's because by default in Bash, the separators for fields is a space. And so we want to tell Bash not to use space, but to use a new line. And the little incantation that you need to know for that is to set the what's called the internal field separator, the IFS uh, variable. And now when we do that, we get one entry per line. Okay. Now that we've got that, we just need to put our two pieces of our script together. So we've got this one. And, oops, sorry. And we've got our count. And so all we need to start with is getting our genomes. and making our counts. And then we're just going to print the genome, a tab, and the count. And you can see it's just going through every genome, extracting the information, downloading them, and printing them out. And of course, the final step is then to put that maybe to an output file called counts.txt. And so now we have a file where we have the genome, a tab, and the count of the, the, the sorry, the organism, a tab, and the count of the genomes for that organism. And um, where all we need to do is sort on that last column. You can either do that by just downloading it and bring it into Excel or your favorite program, or you can do it um, in Bash. So for example, um, if I just say sort on the second key, and I'm using tab as a delimiter in my file, and it's a number, then I get the zeros at the top, and the most abundant one at the bottom, which is Burkholderia sinensepacea, that has 267 genomes sequenced in RefSeq. Okay. Okay. So that was the first part of the assignment was to do that. The second part of the assignment um, is to uh, take one genome called Brevitella buccalis and figure out what the average size of the genome is. Oops, sorry. So let's set that as our, our genome name. And then again, on the eFetch page, there's an eSearch solution which tells you how to get the genomic DNA for a particular genome. And so all we have to do is combine that with our new genome ID and run that. And here we have um, the way that I've done it is I, I had it print out the, the curl with the name of the file that I want to save. And so it's printed out the, the different commands that I need to get those genomes. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to redirect this to a file called get.sh just so that it's clear exactly what's going on. Oops, sorry. Okay, so I've got, I've just got four little um, curl commands that I want to run, and I can just run that using bash get.sh. 
It's just a simple script. It's just downloading the genomes. So in the Linux part of the manual that I've put online for you guys, there is a description of how to count FASTA files. On the images, there's a program called countfasta.py, which is a simple Python script. It's simple because I wrote it. Um, there's a simple Python script that you can run. It just takes a FASTA file. And in fact, it takes even a compressed FASTA file. So if I just take the first one, gcf underscore zero zero six one. It tells me how many sequences there are, the total length, the shortest, the longest, the N50, and the N75. But for this assignment, we just want to get the length. And so there's, again, a whole bunch of different ways that you can do this assignment. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do it just using awk. And so we can do something like this for file in star.gz. So we've got our, our file. We're going to count the length of the file. And we're going to pipe that output. To, and we're going to look for total length. So we can just grab for length. And then we're going to print. In fact, we can do this all in one line, one command. We can use awk to match the line that contains the word length, and to print, by default, awk separates on white space. We want to print the one to the third field, which will be the length of the sequence, so $3. So those are, those are the lengths that we want. The last thing we need to do is to find the average, and we can do that quite easily in awk as well by just adding up the lengths, and then printing that sum, that total number of line, uh, t that total length divided by the number of records. So the average length is 2.99402 times 10 to the 6 base pairs. Okay, so 2 million base pairs. That's not really an accident. I mean, it, it's kind of an accident because I chose um, Provotella somewhat at random. But in fact, the average genome size of a bacteria is about 2 million base pairs. Okay. Remember, the human genome size is about 3 billion base pairs, a bacteria is about 2 million, and a phage is about 50 KB or something like that. We talked about that ages ago. So those are the solutions to that first assignment. Um, hopefully you guys got through it all. It looks like most of you got through it all, all the way to the end. This is one way to solve the problem. There are plenty of other ways to solve this problem. And um, you can do it, like I said, you can do it in Python, you can do it in R, you can do it in Perl, you can do it in Bash. You can do it however you want to try. <laughs>